Good morning, Bartlett Hills family and visitors on this beautiful Sunday morning with cool fall temperatures. I'm hoping that your day started off well. Uh, I want to start off with introducing myself. My name is Steve McPherson. I am the missions and administration pastor at Bartlett Hills Baptist Church. Um, our uh, senior pastor, lead pastor, Elliot Lenhaas, is not feeling well. And at the time of this recording, he is currently being hospitalized. He has a combination of COVID and uh, pneumonia. So please keep Elliot in your prayers as well as Denise, because Denise uh, ha has uh, not been feeling well as well. And uh, the family is, being, uh, is doing a lot of battles right now. So uh, please keep them in your prayers. Uh, a couple announcements. Uh, just a quick reminder that we are still collecting toys for Brinkley Heights. And you have one of two things uh, as far as getting them here to the church. You can um, drop them by the back door, then text me. And at the end of this recording, I will uh, give you my cell phone number if you don't already have it. And you can just let me know they're at the back door and I can put them in at whatever time. Um, the other way you can is wait until we're live again. And I would love to tell you I know when that is. I do not. So, so... Um, uh, just sit tight. Uh, hopefully uh, this time of separation will go quickly and and we will be back together as a church family. If you're watching this as a guest, um, we have been meeting together um, live at the church for a couple of weeks only to have a couple of people fall ill during this period of time. And we thought it is in everyone's best interest and safety um, that we uh, uh, isolate and separate uh, for a little bit to let things clear up. Things seem to be clearing up nicely. Um, right now, uh, we're just quite frankly waiting on our pastor. And we pray that he heals very, very quickly. And we're back to our normal uh, Sunday morning services with Bible study at 8.30, church services at 9.45, and our second Bible study at 11 a.m. So with that said, um, and let me take my watch off. I'm going to tell you my one and only uh, pastor joke, preacher joke that I know. And that is, uh, do you know what it means when the pastor or the preacher takes his watch off? Yeah, the answer to that is, is nothing. He's not going to pay attention to it. And uh, that's kind of the way I work. So anyway, but uh, I'm one and done. That's my history. So with that said, um, I welcome you and let's pray and we'll get started. Father God, we love you. Lord, we thank you for this day that you've brought us together. Lord, uh, we just uh, lift up our pastor to you and his wife and pray that you would heal them quickly and bring him back quickly. Uh, Lord, uh, I pray that you uh, are in control of this service, this time of worship. This time would bring you glory and honor. And Lord, we thank you for those guests that have stepped up and have stepped in and are watching this video, maybe for the very, very first time, I pray that you would bless them in a mighty way. Uh, Lord, we ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. With that said, this last week, um, on November 11th, we celebrated Veterans Day. And that's kind of where the message is going to be coming from uh, on this day. Uh, but a little bit of history about Vet Veterans Day. It officially started uh, at the end of World War I. Um, World War I officially ended June 28th, uh, 1919. But Veterans Day it was found to be known as Armistice Day, if I pronounce that correctly, on November 11th. So um, the war actually ended on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month um, when an armistice uh, between Allied nations and Germany went into effect. With that said, um, that's where our Veterans Day came from. And we want to salute and thank all of the vets that have so graciously um, protected our country. Um, I know that at Bartlett Hills, we have a lot of Army, a lot of Navy, a lot of Marines, a lot of Air Force, a lot of Coast Guard that have gone through the service through the years, and we thank you for the service. Um, just, uh, just a little bit about, I know, uh, uh, their journey as they served is they first had to make a decision to serve, and, and that was not a lightly taken uh, decision. It moved from a decision to a commitment. They decided to serve, then they committed to serve. From the commitment, it moved to training, discipline, and action. Um, and as they went through this journey, um, a huge amount of personal sacrifices took place. Some of these personal sacrifices, certainly not all of them, are, are they put their lives at risk. Um, 
They are sent to locations uh, that they have no say in. Um, they are sent to uh, different duty stations. Um, they have extended time away from their family. Um, and, are, and quite frankly, they're unable to put down roots over an extended long period of time. Home happens to be where they were or where they are at that time. Um, once again, we thank you, veterans. Uh, we thank you for your sacrifices. We thank you for your service. We thank you for, quite frankly, the freedom um, that we have because of your service. We do not take that lightly. And this is where our message is going to be coming from today. So, uh, veterans, let me pray for you guys, and uh, we'll get started. Father, um, Lord, we think about all the men and women um, that have put their lives at risk uh, for us to have the freedoms that we have here at this nation. Lord, uh, we thank you um, for their heart of service. We thank you for their courage. We thank you for their heart uh, that wants to be obedient. And Lord, that they, they follow their commanders. Lord, they, they, they take the risk um, um, going overseas, going into other worlds, or not worlds, but other countries. Lord, we thank you. Um, that they have so graciously um, volunteered, stepped up to protect us. Lord, we thank you. I pray that you would bless their uh, families in just a mighty, mighty way. Lord, um, now as we go into this message, Lord, we'll be talking about your warriors. And Father, uh, we thank you for the privilege of being able to call you Dad. And Dad, guide us and direct us. We ask these things in your Son's name. Amen. Okay, as I, just as I happened to finish that prayer, guess what happened? My iPad timed out and clocked out. So, okay, we're back in now. So, in light of Mentor's Day, um, this message is going to be predominantly for the Christians. And this message is, is the second, the moment you accepted Christ. The Bible verse in 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away, and be, behold, the new has come. You became a new creation. Here's what you need to make sure you understand. You're a new creation. You're a new warrior. Uh, battles are going to come. Battles are going to occur as you're a child of Christ. Along with becoming a new creation, our t basic training began. You also instantly become an enemy of Satan's. In 1 Peter 5.8, it says, Be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion for someone to devour. Your battle started that day. Who knows what battle you're going through, whether it's illnesses within your family, whether it's battles at work with co-workers, whether it is, whether it is trying to figure out in this crazy economy how your finances are going to work and how you will be able to make ends meet. Um, your battles can become um, um, dealing with uh, uh, just life in general. Every time you turn around, it could be a grumpy neighbor. It could be that grumpy salesperson at the grocery store. Um, all of these are little battles that are meant to destroy your, destroy your joy and take away your focus. There is an enemy out there that wants to make you an ineffective warrior and ultimately destroy you. Who exactly is that enemy? Ephesians 6.12 tells us, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So you understand, when you run into that grumpy waitress or waiter, when you run into that grumpy neighbor, your battle's not with them. Your battle's with the dark forces that are influencing them. I'm going to camp out here for just a minute or two just to talk about that. Um, um, as we go through these things, think about all the battles the Christian does. And now think for a moment about the person that does not have a relationship with Christ. Um, years and years ago, when I've told this story to some of y'all, I heard this pastor once say that put everything into perspective exceptionally well. And that is, for the non-Christian, life here on earth is the closest thing that they will experience to heaven. But for the Christian, life on earth is the closest thing that you'll experience close to hell. 
let that sink in for just a moment. For the unsaved individual, life does not get any better for them. Everything's downhill if they do not know Christ as their Savior. But for us, for the Christian, this is as bad as it gets. We have constantly uh, an eternity with our Creator in heaven to look forward to. So as, and, and again, just as it said um, in Ephesians, our battle is not with them. As a matter of fact, it's just the opposite. Those are the people that we should be loving. Those are the people that we should be ministering to. Those are the people that we should be reaching out to. You know, and real world is, some of them aren't going to want you. And real world is, some of them are going to not only not want you, but they're going to reject you. They're going to minimize who you are and and what you believe in. Our battle is not against them. Our battle is against the dark forces. But God, God has equipped us for battle. He's prepared us. Much like our military, our military does not just, hey, I'm here to fight, and then that's it. It's over and done with. No. Um, God has equipped us in Ephesians 6, 13 through 17. It says, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted, uh, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the the, the, the first question, so to speak, that we need to answer is, is like when, they're, when the men are in the military, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Coast Guard, who provides their armor? The service that they're in, okay, who provides our armor? God provides our armor. He just described our armor that he's providing for us. Now, here's the deal. Here's the kicker on all this. We have to decide whether we're going to put it on. We have to decide whether we're going to use it. That is our free will. We can reject it. He's made us a new person. But we have to we have to be able to put on put on the the, the buckle of truth, uh, the, 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 the buckle of truth around our waist, the breastplate of righteousness. All these things are are, are, are protective. Um, the, the, your feet are fitted with the gospel of peace. What is it here for? Or why are we getting this? Well, just like I said, Satan wants to destroy us. We need to be prepared for the battle through all of these implements, all of these tools, all of this armor that God has provided to prepare for that battle. Because again, going back to the very, therefore put up, so that when the day of evil comes, it's coming, it's here, it's arrived. If you haven't experienced it, praise the Lord and, and your time will be coming if you're a believer. Why should we prepare so we can stand the ground? This is opposite than retreating. We want to stand. We don't want to be in retreat. We want to stand our ground for what we believe in, why we believe it. God has not given us a spirit of fear. We have our confidence in Him. The question is now, on this one is, the readiness. Where does the readiness come from? God's word says the readiness comes from the gospel of peace. We get our readiness from God's word. We get our readiness from knowing that we have our eternity with the, the creator of the universe because he sent his son to die for us. And we accepted that gift of salvation from him. And the peace that comes with that, the confidence that comes with that. How can Christians be so happy during a really screwed up world? Because we know the gospel of peace. You've closed yourself with truth. That's protection. You've closed yourself with righteousness. That's protection. You've got the gospel of peace, so you should be ready. There should be no surprises. You have faith, which is protection. Salvation, which is protection. And the word of God, which is your weapon. Here's the deal. <clears throat> Elimination of one piece of gear weakens us. 
Can you imagine one of our veterans going into battle and going, uh, Sergeant, I left my helmet in the barracks. Uh, Captain, I left my gun on the rack. No. That you, I, I don't, I mean, some of you vets, you might be snickering right now. Can you tell me what happens when that, if anything like that ever happened? But I can't imagine going into battle and leaving a piece of equipment behind. Well, same thing for us. God provides us the protection. God provides us um, the weapon. The question is, is will we wear it? Will we use it? Will we train with it? Will we be disciplined with it? What about the gospel of peace? The gospel is easy to share um, for those folks that are kind and considerate. What about the folks that are not so lovable? People that don't like us? People that are different? People that think differently? People that believe we are the dumbest human beings to believe in an outdated Bible? Those folks are hard. If you haven't experienced it, try to love that difficult person. It doesn't mean they're ever going to agree with you. It doesn't mean that they're ever going to love you back. But that doesn't tell, that, that, that doesn't change what God tells us that we are to do. We are to love them. Training and preparation never ends. It's a day by day, moment by moment. How are we going to react with hate? How are we going to react with criticalness? How are we going to react with anger? How are we going to react with love? So the question is, are we constantly in training with our weapon, the Word of God? You know, Elliot talks a lot about this and, and talks about being in the Bible, being in your quiet time. Um, that daily preparation of what you're going to face um, on, as you go into battle at work, as you go into battle at school, as you go into battle wherever God leads you during that day, that quiet time, that preparation time is, is, is invaluable to calm your spirit so that you don't get sucked in to just the junk that we face, quite frankly, on a day-to-day -day basis. You've got to spend time in God's Word. The question is, is are you ready? Readiness, Ephesians 6, 18, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. You know, this is not a casual statement. Um, um, this is not a request. This is a do. Be alert and always keep praying. Praying in the Spirit. That's not praying in the Spirit is not praying as you know everything. It is praying as your confidence comes from our risen Savior. Your confidence comes from God the Creator. Your confidence comes from the Holy Spirit and His influence in your life. I've talked about this in the past. Um, on multiple occasions. One of my favorite um, Bible passages is in Ephesians 4 8. And that is, is, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is admirable or praiseworthy, think about such things in Philippians 4 8. When you're doing battle and, and you've been done wrong, and when I say wrong, wrong in the world since you didn't get that promotion. Maybe not only did you not get that promotion, but you just lost your job. The question is, is finding those things that God puts in our lives that we can focus on. True, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, and praiseworthy. In closing, Matthew um, 20 to 36 through 40 says, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself.
All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Love your neighbor as yourself. He doesn't say anything about that we have to like them. He doesn't have to say anything about that they have to be good, they have to go like we go. That Your next door neighbors may be living a lifestyle that's totally contrary to the Bible and to, uh, and to God's Word. God still tells us to love them. Your neighbors are those we come in contact with, you, uh, with us as we go about our daily life. That gas station person, that grocery store clerk, that co-worker, the stranger that just stole your parking space as you're pulling into Walmart or Sam's, the person in the car ahead of you that just cut you off, the waiter or waitress that delivered an incorrect meal or a meal that, eh, not so good. Don't be critical. Don't be mean-spirited. Be the gracious encourager that has a thriving, growing relationship with the creator of the universe. Love does. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for these words, Lord, that you've given us. Lord, I pray that we would be a church that love does, that we'd be out there meeting, Lord, that we'd be have a smile on our face, that we would serve. Lord, um, guide us, direct us. Father, may we see and go as you've directed us. We love you and ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. Before we finish, though, I have one last thing. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, you do not know Christ as your Savior. This is not a complicated thing. God, the creator of the universe, sent his son to die for us. When he died on that cross, he said it's finished. What he's saying it's finished is, is he's fulfilled the requirement for you to have a relationship with God. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes before the Father except through him. So in order to come through Christ, it Bible tells us that salvation is a gift from God. Just like when someone hands out that Christmas gift. Someone will give you a Christmas gift. Someone will give you a birthday gift. They hand you a gift. Salvation is a gift that, that Jesus is presenting to you. Your decision is... is are you going to take it? Are you going to open it? Because a gift sitting off the side is nothing but a wrapped pretty box. That's it. But you have to take it. You have to open it. And that when you open that box, God's gift to you is eternal salvation if you put your trust in Him. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says, If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. It's nothing more complicated than that. You're sitting here going, but I, I, I've got this in my life and that in my life and that in my life and that in my life. And all this junk that clogs our life. Guess what? You have the creator of the universe that wants to help you get out of that quagmire. And he will. But you've got to reach to him. Let me pray for those that may not know Christ. Lord, um, we lift up those that may be hearing this message that do not know you. And Father, um, we pray that, uh, Lord, that uh, as they reach out to you, we know what your answer will be. Come to me, child. Lord, we know that as they reach out to you, that gift of salvation awaits them if they'll only trust your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, um, whatever hindrances may be keeping people from making a decision for you, Lord, we pray that you would bind them Lord, that, that people can freely come to you. And Lord, that uh, children would be born this day into your kingdom. We ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. Everyone, have a great week. Hopefully we'll be live next week. And as soon as we find out eh, live next week, how about we'll be meeting in face-to-face -face next week. I hope we're all alive next week. Uh, so I hope that we'll be meeting face-to-face -face this week. Y'all have a great week. And thank you for tuning in to Bartlett Hills Baptist Church services on Sunday. What is today's date? Sunday, November 15th. God bless. Take care.